Hi everybody, um, welcome to The Professor, my YouTube channel, where as a professor of photography and Photoshop, I break down elements in, in both. And today we're going to talk a little bit about contouring and shaping. And we do this with a technique called dodging and burning. There are many ways to do this. I use a curves technique where I find shadows and highlights and reinforce those on a model. Now, those of you who have never um, contoured your face, let's say you're not a makeup artist, which is probably most of us, how do you even know where the shapes are, like where the contours in a person's face are and what you need to help define, right? So if we have this model right here, this senior gal, and we look at her face, we can faintly see shadows and highlights. Shadows and highlights are what make what makes something have depth. It would give it's what gives you shape and form, right? So when we did frequency separation in my last tutorial, um, and if you haven't done the frequency separation tutorial, you might want to. This is the remainder of our frequency separation tutorial. It's a little group where I grouped the blur and the texture layer, and I put them in a group, and they're just sitting right here above the background layer. Now, again, in our frequency separation tutorial, I talked about what it takes to take down a 3D object on your face, which is usually a zit. It usually has a highlight and shadow. We want to make sure that looks really flat. So in order to do that, we got to take the highlight and the shadow off or bring them, the highlights and the shadows closer together and decrease contrast. And what that does is it makes it harder to detect. So we have generally a fla more flawless face because you're not detecting that 3D shape on the face. Well, when we're contouring the face, we do the exact opposite. We take a flat object that normally looks sort of flat, and we reinforce the highlights and the shadows to give the feel of a more of a 3D on their face. Now, this gal here has sort of a round face, and she is a prime candidate for contouring because what contouring does is the shadows help define the jawline and the cheekbones and stuff, and it gives you a sharper looking face. I myself have a super round face and I would benefit from contouring also. Um, yeah. So where do we contour? Where do we shape? We can see on this face here there's certain spots and we want we, we want to dig into. But before we do that, I want to show you traditionally where a where makeup would normally go. And you'll notice that it usually goes next to a highlight and a shadow. And on this face right here, you'll see there's some contouring done, there's highlights and shadows, there's a highlight down the ridge of the nose, there's shadows on either side of it. So this dark, light, dark area is called chiaroscuro, and it's an Italian uh, fr phrase that means light, dark. The, the patterns of, li of light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, and then light across the screen create the illusion of depth both in images and landscapes and on the landscape of your face. So here I've checked and went and circled all the highlight areas. So there's all the, hair, all the highlight areas on a normal person's face or on a person's face where you'd normally want to put highlight accents. Cheeks right here, this inverted triangle is usually reminiscent of a, of a, a, Rembrandt, a Rembrandt lighting. Uh, it's super subtle here and this isn't Rembrandt, it's more flat. But these inverted triangles under the cheeks are places where highlights go. Uh, another highlight goes on top of the nose here. There's a highlight on the top of the lip. There's a highlight on the bottom of the lip. And there's a highlight on the on the, up, the this bottom of the chin down here, right? There's also a highlight on the bone right here and on the lid right there. So there's the bone here and the lid there. there. There's a couple, I can't even speak today, there, there. And then there's some highlights up here on the forehead, okay? So there's the highlights and here's the shadows. What you'll notice is wherever there's a highlight, there's also a shadow on either side to pop that highlight. I'm not sure if anybody's ever noticed this before. Um, I know makeup people really know this well. So here we have a highlight, a shadow, a highlight, a shadow, a highlight, a shadow. I know it's getting super boring, I know. A highlight, a shadow, a highlight, and there you go. And that creates an illusion of depth. Right here on this side we have a, sh a shadow. We have a highlight here. Generally on the out of the eye here we have a little bit of shadow too. Same thing on this side. Shadow, highlight here, and a little bit of shadow on the bottom. So you'll see how crazy this is, that how, why this works this way. It's almost scientific, where it goes shadow, highlight, shadow. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that before we started contouring and shadowing and highlighting so that you could actually find out where this is. Now the face, if we go back to our subject, the, the human's face, if you shadow and highlight it in a different manner than it normally should be, 
you'll change their anatomy. Bumps have a certain highlight and shadow. Uh, different cheekbone structures and cheeks have a certain different highlight and shadow. So if you start messing with those, you could change the anatomy of the person. Sometimes you want to, but sometimes you want to leave them alone and make them look just how they look and not mess with their anatomy. Their anatomy is good enough. Okay. A lot of editors go too far and start changing what the way somebody looks, and it's not the way they look. You can give them a good skin day, but don't change their anatomy. So here we have the face. And what I like to do, you're going to look and go, well, where do we even highlight and shadow here? It's so subtle, and shooting available light outside is so, it lacks such contrast to be able to find these areas that I've developed a certain trick that I like to do to be able to find them. And what I do is I add a, let's add it here, I go to the curves layer. By adding, I go to an adjustment layer down here at the bottom or at the top, wherever you want to find it. I go to curves, and what I do is I pull the shadows in the bottom part of this uh, histogram. I pull them really far down. Now, what you're seeing is the highlight areas will emerge, and you pull the highlights up here a little bit. Highlight areas will emerge, and the shadow areas will sink into darkness. And right now, you can see that you have a guide of where to put highlights and shadows. And you'll notice it's just like the guide I showed you um, in just a second ago. Darks here, light on the cheek, the the uh, the brow bone out there. Darks back in here. This is an inverted triangle on the cheek. There's the darkness. There's the highlight on the on the nose bone. There's the shadow. There are the little highlights on the lip. There's another highlight on that bottom lip. There's the shadow. There's the highlight. So I'm going to use that as a guide. So what I'm going to do? Let's turn that guide off. Okay. But what I'm going to do is now I'm going to come back here to this layer right there, and I'm going to add my shadows, okay, where I can start working my shadows out to start contouring. The first one I'm going to do is my shadows, and the next one I'm going to do is my highlights. So if I'm going to, add, if I'm going to work on my shadows, I go to curves. I'm going to pull the shadows down a little bit, like that feels good, okay? You don't need them to be crazy drastic, just enough to make them a little darker than her face. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I don't want this affecting the entire area. So if I switch my foreground color here to black, okay, I'm going to fill this white mask with black. You do that, you can do that by hitting option delete. And now it disappears. Why is that important? Well, I don't want it on the entire image. I just want to reveal it with white where exactly where I want it to come out. And painting white on a black mask will show that underlying adjustment, which is right here. The adjustment's still there. If I hold shift and click, see my adjustment's still there. I just hid the mask. There's my adjustment, but I put a mask over it, which hides the adjustment. And all I'm going to do with white is reveal it. So now I'm going to do my highlights the exact same way. Come in here, go to a curves layer, push my highlights up a little bit, just gently. It can be super subtle. Let's, ooh, I forgot. I need to call this shadows. There we go. Left click twice and call that shadows or you'll forget. Come down here, I need to call this highlights. I'm going to move this to my foreground color to make it black. I'm going to hold option delete down and delete that mask or fill that mask with black. Okay? So now that I've done this, now. I can turn my curves layer up here back on. So, and I'm going to brush these in. I'm going to brush the darks in and brush the lights in. So, let's see. I'm going to go to my brush right here. I'm going to make sure my opacity is about 10%. I'm going to make sure it's a real soft brush. The hardness is zero. And now, so the fast way to you guys to get around and make your brush bigger or smaller while working in Photoshop is the bracket keys up under the delete key on your keyboard. There's two bracket keys, a left bracket and a right bracket, and that is just just to the right of a P, the P key, okay? That sounded really weird, but yeah. So I'm hitting left bracket, make it smaller, right bracket, making it bigger. I keep my hand on the keyboard like this a lot of times while I edit. So I'm going to activate this guide. Actually, let's just call this guide, left click, guide, so we know. That's our guide. I'm going to activate that guide, and now I can see where to paint. So I'm going to do my shadows first. If I paint with black, which is what it's on right now, nothing is going to happen. But if I go and paint with white, at 10%, if I paint with white, I can paint the shadows in and use this as a guide. 
So I'm going to sit here and go like this, and I'm going to paint, gently paint the shadows in where I see my shadow guide, okay? Shadow guide. That sounds sort of like fantasy, like the shadow guide. It's sort of weird, but yeah. I'm going to paint my shadows in and make them a little more pronounced. I got this cheek over here, this around her cheek line. And all it is, you guys, it turns it into sort of a paint by numbers. And you don't have to sit there and like recreate the wheel and figure out, well, what does her face look like? How do I even know where contours are, right? You don't need to even worry about that because her face gives you her natural contours. There we go, okay? There's her face. I've reinforced her, her shadows. Now, if we take this off and click the guide off, we'll see. Look, those are where her shadows are. Now, look, I go a little, again, like in, like in the skin editing tutorial with frequency separation, I go a little overboard, okay? I go a little overboard because I want to be able to see. I want to be able to see my what's happening, okay? I want to be able to see my stuff, and I can always tone it, take it, tone it back and take it down by knocking the opacity down of my layer, okay? So I'm going to go overboard, and you're going to be like, dude, this looks like tragic. And I know, it is a tragic wreck. Okay, I'm going to do the top lip a little bit, too, and darken that up. Like that, and hit the bottom of her chin a little bit. There we go. There's some nice contouring. Okay, I feel like Bob Ross a little bit. Happy little clouds and whatever. Let's sharp. There we go. Okay, so there's the contouring of her face. We can see more easily the highlights now, but I'm going to turn the guide back on. I'm going to go to my highlight layer, and I'm going to just gently brush over where the highlights are. They're right in here. You can totally see them. Okay. Highlight her forehead a little bit. I'm going to highlight this bone. Highlight this bone over here on this side that pops out. I'm going to highlight this lid a little bit because I usually like that right in there too. And you can sort of see that. I like this area, make that little triangle down here. There's our nose shadow, another triangle here. Lips. And then the lip highlight right across the, bo the bottom of it right here. And then the chin. Okay, now, what I'm going to do now is I don't need this anymore, right? This guide up here, I don't really need that. Why do I not need this guide? Well, all it is is a guide, right? It doesn't do anything for my image. Um, it's way too contrasty. It was just a, it, it was just a, um, a curves layer that I made, and I don't really actually need it. And actually, I do need to finish some stuff. Let me go ahead in the shadow layer and bring some more shadow area down into the top of her chest here for a second. You'll see me paint, because there's highlights and shadows there, too, that'll accentuate her chest and collarbones. I think that looks better there. Let's shake the shadow off that just gently. Now let's go back and add some highlights to this area. And again, this is sort of super subtle. Just going to brush it little bits here and there. Okay, now let's take the guide off and see what we have. Okay, now you might look and see, gosh, yeah, that looks overkill. Yeah, it is overkill. And again, I'm just looking to see where the areas are, and I'm going to tone them down in a second. So let's take this guide that we're using to determine where our highlights and shadows were, and we're just going to trash this. So we're going to left-click and hold down and drag that to the garbage can. Now we have, again, our face. Now what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to, since I was a little bit overkill on the highlights and the shadows, in the same sort of manner, I'm just going to hold left click down. When this is highlighted, I'm going to hold left click down, or excuse me, I'm going to hold shift down and left click this. And now both of those are, are highlighted, both these layers. I'm going to hit Command G. I'm going to call this group uh, Contour. Some people call it Burn and Dodge, which is what I did, but it's also contouring the face. We'll hold Contour, call it Contour. And then I'm going to come in here in the Opacity. And I'm going to scale it way back and drop the opacity way down. And you'll see, when I was talking about me being subtle, I wasn't joking. 
right? Like, and here's what happens. Now, as your eyes sit there and look at it and, and look, check it out, for some of you, this might be too much, right? And if you'll notice her arms and her legs uh, and the other areas of her body don't have this much contrast to them and don't look like this, yeah, well, I'd honestly go in and paint those in and make those look like that also, okay? Um, but right now, we're just focusing on the face. So we back it out. We take a look at it. That looks pretty good. I'm probably going to back it off a little bit more, okay? So I'm going to go to the contour. It's backed off 45%. I'm probably going to bring it down just a touch more. And we'll see what that looks like. And so you can see, actually, look. For, you'd think there's no difference, but see how it's just a subtle difference that helps shape her face and contour her face a little more? That feels pretty good to me. Super subtle. I'd even back it off more, man. I don't know. Because I really overkill this. There we go. That to me feels a little better. Because it doesn't look, it's not far off from what she already is. Just a little bit of subtlety. And there we go. There's my contouring of the face. Um, it's based on how your face lines up. It's based on shadows and highlights. It's based on your own anatomy. You're not reinventing the wheel. You're not applying just random technique to burning and dodging, but you're using the person's face as, as their own guide or as your guide for where, to put, for where to put highlights and shadows and to give that person's face depth and to make it look to chisel cheekbones and jawbones and lips and stuff, right? So that's how I would, uh, that's how I would um, dodge and burn. So lens friends out there everywhere, go shoot. Keep enjoying your photography. Keep, keep playing with Photoshop. Keep editing. Uh, keep playing. And again, uh, it's lots of trial and error. And it's mostly error, okay? So get out there and just keep shooting and, uh, and we'll see you next episode.